In the previous video, I showed you how I forged the Damascus for this blade, and then forged this blade out, took it through the hardening process, the hand sanding and prepping it, and getting it ready for assembly. If you like what you see, I invite you to subscribe and hit that like button. It'll help me make more content. Now in this video, I'm gonna take you through the journey of how I assemble this handle onto this blade. Let's begin. So what we're gonna do is put some color onto this bleached out horn. It has a lot of nice texture. It's sandbar stag, and we're gonna bring it back to life, and we're gonna be using this potassium permagnamate. Yeah, it'll turn a natural looking brown. Typically, I like a five inch handle, so I want a four inch tang. And I'm gonna cut my shoulders about, about an eighth of an inch in. So now what we're gonna do is put tape on the edge so I don't cut myself. We're gonna take it to the grinder and just take off this little bit right here and right here. And then take that down and get the tang ready. Let's go do that. So what we have here is the wrought iron we're going to use for the guard and the butt cap. The spacer is going to be bronze and then nickel silver is what I'm going to use as the trim in between the bronze, the wrought iron and the sandbar stag. So that piece of stag is now dry. I could give it more coats if I want to to make it darker. And then once this gets some finish on it, whether it's wax clear or whatever, it's going to darken up quite a bit. Now I take the wrought iron to the wire wheel and I try to leave as much of that forged look as I can. I like that organic look that it has in that wrought iron. Adds a lot of character to what we're doing. Sometimes I'll add a second coat of the potassium permagnate to darken the color. I cut the slot in my mini mill and it's pretty close, but then I take it to my, my bench vise and I will just touch it up with a file so that everything fits in there just nice and perfect. So I really love my Shearline mill, but it's not very accurate. It cuts nice holes and stuff like that. And usually I have to file to get it to fit. Well, today I cut that hole way too big. I don't know if you can see it. I'll show you how to close it up. So I like to make sure that my material is wide enough for the handle that I'm using. Looks good. We're going to have enough material to get the shape we want out of here. But if you look at this, look at that gap. It's crazy. Can't have that. Perfect. Now we'll drive it on. We're going to temper that tang so that, that way it doesn't snap off when we're beating on it. So now I just need to tidy up that fitting. Can you see here? There's indent marks. Now, if I need to, I can relieve this area for the, the shoulders of the tang to sit on. The only thing I'm gonna do now is worry about tightening up these sides a teeny bit. I kiss 
place that side over a teeny bit more. So now we have these high spots on the back from hammering the sides in. Now we're going to take it to the disc grinder and make it flat. That'll be our flat surface, parallel surface for building our spacers and our trim. Now we have a flat surface. Even though there's scratches, that's not as important. See where it dips off here? That'll get ground off. But this surface is now flat. So we're ready to start putting our trim, spacer, and then fit the handle to that. Now, because of having a disc grinder, cutting that shoulder flat, this one flat, we have a nice tight fit this way, and then we have a nice tight fit this way. So now what I'm gonna do is mark for the hole I need to put in here for the trim. So now I mill out the hole, but it's just a little too tight, so I'm going to touch it up with a file. We're gonna clean off the burrs and clean up this finish because this finish is a forged finish. He comes out pretty quick. I'll see if it fits. No, too much to file. I'm gonna put this back on the mill and kiss off a few thousandths off this side probably. Let's see what damage we did. So it's bigger on one side, smaller on the other. So now that we filed out this opening, this opening's smaller. Okay, now for this piece, we're gonna put on the spacer. So now what we're going to do is remove the pith that's in the middle of this handle. And we always want to remember that we want to keep a nice straight center line on the handle. So we want our surfaces to be parallel on the butt cap and here where it's going to meet the spacer. So let's get that drilled out. Okay, now I think we're pretty good. I got a real thin material here on the edge, but this is very strong. So now we'll see how we fit. <clears throat> so now what I'm gonna do is take off these corners and round the tang here. So it'll be reduced a teeny bit, but then that way it'll fit inside that hole.
That's all we needed. And that doesn't jeopardize the strength at all, not one little bit. I mean, look how thick that tang is. So now it, it seats on there. So now what we have to do is bend the tang to match the curvature in the stag. So we'll cut this off, surface grind it. We'll machine a little pocket in here. I will silver braze this standoff threaded nut into that pocket. And then I use a grade eight bolt. I'll cut this off and silver braze that into the ting. And then that will thread onto there. And there's a lot of thread. So if I had to cut the bolt down or if I had to cut the threads back, I got material to do that with. Now when I'm ready to assemble the stag onto the tang, I'll use tape and Teflon tape to seal up the tang and then I'll use quick JB weld and set the handle on there, wet set it. And then what this does is no matter what I do, I go back to that handle, it's oriented perfectly how I set it to the tang. Then I can put my guide pins in there. Once the sandbar stag is wet set onto the handle, then at that point, I go ahead and drill guide pins. That way I can shape the spacer, the nickel silver trim, and start oriented it to the guard. And no matter how many times I take it off or put it back on with those guide pins, which is the top, which is the bottom, and those pins will keep everything perfectly in line. Once I have all the pieces ready for assembly, now it's time to trim up the bolt that I silver brazed onto the tang. 
get it to the right height so that it sits below the horizon of the stag. And then also I can trim up my standoff nut as well. Now the knife is all assembled, ready for shaping the guard, spacers, and the butt cap will do at the very end. Once I remove most of the material from the guard with the grinder, then it all turns to hand rasping and filing everything so that it lines up together. Yep. We're getting closer. So once the handle is all fit together, the spacers, the nickel silver to the guard, now it's time to put in the S-curve. And I chuck it up in my vise, heat it up and lightly tap it to where I want it. Once I get the guard the shape that I want it and all the big filing marks out of it, then I go to the wire wheel and it adds a little subtle texture, take off all the sharp corners. It's very organic material to work with. I love working with wrought iron. So now we're ready for final assembly, fit and finish. That handle will go together and come apart many, many different times till I get the finish that I'm looking for. Okay, so now I finished etching the blade. It went through about six cycles of etching in ferric chloride and distilled water to get the depth and the color. 
And then I did about a four hour soak in instant coffee. That makes the black blacker. Now the handle is ready to go together. So now we're gonna put JB Weld to seal it to the blade. And then we're gonna put all the pieces together and fill it with epoxy and then screw on the butt cap. So now we have a completed buoy. There's a lot of work that goes into that handle. If you like what you've seen so far, please subscribe and like. In the next video, I'm going to show how we make a sheath for a completed package. This is 8 to 9 ounce Wicked and Craig leather overlaid with alligator. I hope you join me for that video.